Morning, sure, I think baby. last time we spoke was two months ago. You were cautious then. I know about a month back, you've turned largely constructive. How do you feel about equities right now? I mean, right now, the setup has been driven by investor sentiments. And if we look at the PMI figures, we look at the outlook and the deterioration or deceleration of global growth environments, and obviously bond yields, Fed outlook, right? Uh, we think the market sell-off has been overdone. Uh, we, we think the sell-off is purely driven by a lot of pessimism. But if we monitor the pessimism, how far it's been, you know, in the United States, uh, which is the center of the sell-off, uh, we saw that the AAIR investor investor indicator, a sentiment indicator, suggesting that they have never been more bearish in the last 12 years, and which typically, unless you get a recession happening imminently, uh, we do typically get a rebound. Here in China, um, whilst we still have the debates about how zero COVID policy only impacts uh, economic outlook, but what we are seeing is the number of cases have been falling, the number of cities that have been locked down has been fallen from a peak in early April from 40 cities to now 31 cities. Uh, you know, there's no magic um, crystal ball to say, okay, uh, it will be done in the next month or two. But the developments so far, despite the lockdown, have been increasing even in Beijing in the last couple of days. Uh, we, we are seeing good signs that we could, by the end of June, be on a path of unwinding lockdowns thereafter. And the economic outlook uh, in the current trajectory is that uh, the majority of the downside would happen in this quarter. But for the second half this year, if our base case scenario anticipating that the lockdown could begin to, I guess, exit uh, for the second half of the year, then recovery will start to take place. And then we ask ourselves, where should markets be when the lockdown right. beginning to unwind? Right? So we are still optimistic. Uh, we think it's oversold. Uh, we think there is some room for some recovery right now. Oh, OK. And what gives you that degree of confidence that the base case should be that from June, you know, things are going to reopen? And how do you define lockdowns, by the way? OK. Uh, well, right now, about less than 20 percent of the economy is locked down. You calculate by the percent of GDP that cities are locked down, these 31 cities. Uh, we are looking okay. at somewhere close to 12, 15 percent of China's GDP. OK, uh, we look at that from a retail sales perspective, that's less than 20 percent, I think 18 percent. We look at this from an export perspective, that's less than 20 percent. Yes, there will be some disruption. And then we ask ourselves, what is the scenario where lockdown will continue? What's the probability if you lock down a city like this uh, for, I guess, four weeks or eight weeks or 12 weeks? Is it not going to contain the virus? You know, uh, how is that possible? that it will not contain some level of the spread of the virus, right? So, you know, if we mm. ask the question another way around, OK, well, actually, it, it's going to have a good impact. Uh, it happened, it worked in um, Shenzhen. Uh, it managed to bring cases down to Shanghai. And it will likely do so for the same in Beijing. Beijing numbers are right. below 100. So uh, we, we do right. think the another side of the scenario is probably also unlikely. But Shanghai is still in effect, locked down, though, even if cases have come down. But what I'm trying to get to is when you look at these markets that are really trying to figure out, I think there's no debate when it comes to the economy and the impact there. Let's make that clear. When it comes to the market, though, people are trying to figure out, can this market rally sustainably, Jack, as long as mm. this COVID policy is in place? And what are you telling your clients the answer to the question? Well, our view is uh, the market could first start with a rebound. But secondly, uh, we will need the recovery or again, at least the stabilization of the global equity markets. And what needs to right. happen now is um, some stabilization in bond yields, some stabilization to be uh, of the Fed outlook to be fully priced in. And what, when we look at the situation in terms of global liquidity and monetary market policy, the Fed outlook is pretty much baked in. Uh, the 50 basis point high in the next meeting and the next next meeting are baked in. Uh, the 25 basis point after that is baked in. And then now the ECB have became more hawkish. And we do anticipate them to start hiking uh, in July and, and thereafter and taking interest rate by the end of next year to 1.25%. And that is um, a lot in the price. And secondly, uh, what we need to see is some stabilization in bond yields. In the near term, uh, we think Treasury yields will be stabilizing around the 3% area for now. But by the end of the year, we do see it rising towards the 3.3%. But in this path, as 
market become, I guess, more used to a stabilized treasury yields um, in later part of this year, we think equity market will be more stabilized. And, and, and thereafter, okay. uh, we will see a more optimistic China outlook. And that, obviously, for the second half, will depend on the stabilization uh, of the Chinese economy and also um, the stabilization of the yuan, which we think uh, could take place uh, below the seven mark. Uh, okay. In, in fact, to your point there, Jack, we just hit 6.8 on the onshore yuan. You think we go beyond seven? And how do you hedge that? Because hedging seems a bit expensive at this point. Yeah. Uh, right now, I mean, with the yuan already down five, six percent, right? Um, if we look at the factors driving the yuan, um, it's really been a dollar story. The dollar strength have been driving most currencies lower, and the yuan was not spared. And the PBOC, I guess, last month decided, okay, um, given the export the, um, export hits that they, they will likely be experiencing in April, May, and June time, uh, and given the um, risk of um, some outflow that's happening, that's driving some renminbi weakness, uh, we think that PBOC is more open-minded for some two-way volatility in the renminbi. But going forward, the key driver um, to the renminbi is really to do the dollar strength. And we look at the dollar strength right now. I mean, uh, is anyone really going to be chasing at this moment the dollar strength after the, I guess, some, I think some 15% rally in the last one year? Uh, we think we are due for some consolidation soon. Uh, I don't think at this round that the uh, renminbi would break the seven mark. Uh, we would like to see some two-way flow and two-way trading uh, once we reach, I guess, um, next few days. And then um, thereafter, uh, after the rebound, we do recommend that to take advantage of that rebound and start hedging the renminbi. Because looking beyond the 12 months, right, um, the count account surplus in China is likely going to start the, um, I guess, eroding slightly given it hit a record right. high in the first quarter at the end of last year. And that's driven by, you know, Western consumers switching from goods demand to services demand as people live with COVID. And secondly, um, if we look at the um, inflows of uh, bond market, you know, the bond market rebalancing of, uh, you know, in global sovereign bond indices is coming closer to an end in a year's time. And thereafter, inflow for Chinese bond will begin to slow. And that will leave us with less support in terms of capital inflow for the RMB. And we think at that point, uh, the RMB doesn't need to be at the expensive end of the um, currency basket. Uh, they can allow it to come right. back to neutral and normal side. And uh, we think at that point, uh, RMB will be due for more downside. Okay, uh, Jack, what I'm hearing from you is uh, longer term things are going to be okay. The question really is what I do these next one or two months. And for investors, mm. if I have cash right now, what do I do with mm. that? Do I sit in that cash or do I, or do I deploy it in this market? Okay. Well, first on equities, right? uh, we are overweight U.S. and China equities. And we do think at this point in time, sentiment is too pessimistic. And we do see opportunity for investors to participate uh, in the Hong Kong China equity markets. And this one to two months, uh, we could see some stabilization in sentiment and therefore uh, some rebound. And remember, uh, we are looking at a period where the PBOC and the central authorities are likely going to be announcing further stimulus to the economy, targeting the SMEs, targeting infrastructure. And there are sectors that would directly benefit in this environment. And secondly, um, whilst the internet stocks have been, I guess, uh, falling in the last one alongside global equity markets. But what's likely to happen is, um, you know, with the zero COVID lockdowns happening, uh, there will be some added momentum in terms of being biased to the work from home or the, um, I guess, internet platform for the short term. And secondly, um, we are waiting for further announcements uh, from the government in terms of details of how they're likely going to pause a uh, work literary crackdown. And we also heard that um, on the China is beginning to give way to the U.S. regulator to allow some companies to disclose data and audit. And, and, and we think that's all uh, positive news for China equities uh, for investors in the near term.